do know one thing, little heads up, if you ever buy a boat and you just want to clean everything up and clean your lockers out and you see spare parts and keep every single spare part you see, even if you don't know what it's for. We need to sort of sort this problem out because the last thing I want to do is have the gearbox blown up and having to pull that out because that's heavy. I've done that before. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Well guys, after a horrible, horrible night, <laughs> we made it into Ambon. Um, we're in the harbour in Ambon and uh, Lee, guess where he is? Good morning guys. Yes, I'm in the engine bay. People said this boat wouldn't last a year, but we've made it last seven and it's problems like I'm about to share with you, which you feel like they're going to bring it to an end, but I think we'll get through it. So let's start with... We were under passage the other day. We've got some miles to uh, do and we're sort of going against the grain at the moment. So we're doing a bit of motoring. We've done about 200 miles of motoring and we have dumped about 600 mils of oil out of the gearbox. I topped it up the other night and done another 50 miles and we've dumped about 600 mils again. We need to sort of sort this problem out because the last thing I want to do is have the gearbox blown up and having to pull that out because that's heavy. I've done that before. When we first bought Catalpa. I have located the leak. It's on top of the gearbox. It's an old Paragon gearbox. There's a, like a selector piston or something underneath the gear shift. And there's an O-ring that meets that against the housing. So I'm assuming that's what's um, buggered. Whether it's the housing's corroded, the O-ring's worn out, or there's another problem I don't know about. I'm just guessing, throwing a few things out. But guys, we're going to have to pull it apart. It's only the top cover plate. I think it's easy. I hope it's easy. I hope nothing drops in and hope there's no complications. But uh, I'll give you a quick look here. This is the selector. So it goes forward reverse and oil is just pooling around here. So underneath here, there should be like a small little selector piston sort of thing with an O-ring that meets this housing. That's my assumption what's leaking. Old boats, lots of problems. Definitely a problem when you're in Indonesia and you don't have a mechanic. Get into it, start ripping this thing apart and see what we uh, come up with. So this is the gear sele uh, selector, forward reverse. Underneath here is a piston, I think, that's a selector piston or something that has an O-ring sitting on top that rests against this housing. So either this housing has rusted and wrecked the O-ring or the O-ring's perished or... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to find here, but I do know there's an O-ring under there and that has to be the problem, I think, anyway, at this stage. So until we open it up, we won't know. Get greasy and get amongst it and hopefully not break anything. That's a problem with old boats and problems like this. Like, everything's fixable. You know, you can re-tap things, you can do everything, but having the resources to fix a problem on top of a problem, meaning that if I go to undo a bolt and it snaps, having an easy out to get the bolt out, all those little things, or uh, breaking the housing or something doesn't work. This is like a 50 year old gearbox guys, so they don't even make them anymore and parts are very, very limited. I think in the US, there's a couple of suppliers that you can get used parts and some new parts, but they're pretty old. They're a tough gearbox, but like anything mechanical, they have a life and this one, in this circumstance, it's an O-ring, and O-rings have lives, but hopefully, when I pull this apart, I can find an O-ring. I've got a mass amount of O-rings on the boat, from dive compressors parts, to dive gear, to dive regulators, this, that, and just normal, a whole kit of anyway, uh, O-rings. But, there shouldn't be a shortage of O-rings, because we're in Ambon, and uh, there is workshops here and we should be able to find an o-ring close i'm hoping and stop this can get the part from the states but logistically at the moment we're in transit we're in indonesia blah 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 all those things that make it hard until we're based somewhere for at least a month because the postage could be a week could be two months so i don't really want to order anything to where we're not going to be fingers crossed it all goes well and we're not dumping 600 mils of oil over a 50 nautical mile passage all right guys, so that's a bit of a rough plan. I'm just gonna run it over in my head. There's one good way to do that. It's the morning coffee. And just sip away and think about how the day's gonna unfold. You can look at it as a fix by the end of the day or holy moly, we're stuck in Asia in the middle of nowhere. 
chairs. Hopefully uh, later on I'll be doing a different chairs. We had eight bolts and screws to undo and we should have this apart. And if you have a teenage girl and you live in the tropics, every morning, what do you ask, fella? Can you braid my hair? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna braid her hair. He's gonna figure out our problems. I'm gonna get into it, get back into my undies and put my head torch on. <laughs> Won't, won't shock you guys at the moment, but that's my little get up for working in the end, Jermaine, in the tropics. Undies <laughs> and a head torch. Righto, back in business. Okay, one job done. That was her, her hair braided. You might think I'm placing them funny, but there is actually an order to this. When I'm undoing anything, I always lay out everything from bolt sizes, left, right, the orientation, every, everything. I don't just chuck it all in a container. I usually like to lay out mirror of how I pull something apart so you can have a diff you could end up with three or four different bolt sizes at least if you place them how they come apart you know which way they go back together just little things you're always thinking about you know I'm getting pretty bloody good at pulling this crap apart oh, well it is hard work but like they say you know a hard day stuffing around on the boat still nothing like going to work from nine to five so I'll still take a day in the engine bay over a day at work, so... I'll tell you what though, I've probably done more more days in the engine bay than days at work though. I'd... Whoo! So this is where... I'll get your mirror, darling. Do you want to see what you look like? <laughs> you look great! Crack the seal. Woo! Nervous. I don't like pulling stuff apart. Like if something drops or drops in there or drops underneath or I don't know how something goes back together, it's a bit nerve wracking. Feel the heart rate going up. You could do weights with this thing. This is so heavy. I don't know what all the new stuff's like, but all the old gear is so solid. It's obviously all overkill. The ingenuity behind it all was thicker and stronger. Nowadays it's as thin and light as you can get, but good or bad, I don't know. That's the part I need. So I'm going to investigate and clean it all up. I'm gonna put something over there so nothing falls in. Oh, like I say, that is bloody heavy, hey? And it's a little piece. Anyway. Do you remember how heavy the gearbox was? Oh, the gearbox was super heavy. <laughs> it came apart quite easily. So I will just clean that up. Uh, I'll reuse the, the gasket that's there. I'm not phased if it leaks the littlest dribble of oil because at some stage when we're either gonna do a haul out or something, I'll order a new gasket and I can just put a new one on and do it properly. But for now, it's not ripped, it's not torn. I'll clean it, put it back together, tighten it up once I'm done. If I can find the O-ring, I need to replace up there. So like I said, I just had six bolts, two screws to pull out there. Now that's my selector. Now oil is just pooling over here. So it's not rocket science, it's something to do here. Can't come from anywhere else. Under here, in between this plate, and there's a piston underneath here, there should be an O-ring. I don't know if the housing's worn, the O-ring's worn, but I'm gonna to have to figure out how to pull this apart. I've got a bolt here, I've turned it over. So there's our little piston. I don't even know if I've got the right tools here. There's like a retainer clip. I'm gonna see if maybe I can just get a screwdriver, a small one and just open that retainer clip and then that should come out and that'll be stage two. We'll see where we're at. Perfect. Oh wow, it's like a, I've never seen one like that before. Almost like a spring retainer clip. It was actually quite easy. I was able to just put the uh, screwdriver on here and just slide around and I got the retaining ring out quite simply. I'm gonna turn this over. I don't know if I can mess the orientation up so I'm just very careful of which way I place everything. It may just slip in the way it's meant to, but it may not. And then there's a washer. 
like another washer. And then that. And like I just lay everything out in order so it all goes back the reverse way. Makes it easy. That's the way I do it anyway, guys. Take it or leave it. So that was under there. That was like that. Okay. Mental note, I can obviously see this little uh, location pin faces forward. Just things like this, you just always take note. Sometimes you can use a punch and like with anything you remove and you can punch the steel so you line up your two dots and just little things. Make a big difference when you go to put it all back together. So that's where the oil's coming out from. I can see that because it's full of oil. So I don't know what is going to be under here. I'm assuming because I've removed the retaining clip from underneath, this should push out. <coughs> okay. Oh, there's a ball there, spring-loaded ball that just popped out of the side, which is fine. And that's this bolt here, I can undo that bolt. Probably should have undone that first, guys. It would have slid out easier, but hey, you learn these things as you go along sometimes. Big bloody fingers won't get in there and grab this little ball. You want me to grab it? Oh, I just dropped it in the hole. You wouldn't bloody believe that. Little ball just dropped straight down in the hole. I'm gonna have to get that out, but we'll get deal with that later. So there is a bolt on the side here. If I release that, it would have just the bearing would have slid into there. Obviously a pivoting bearing. That's fine. I can see the forward reverse slots that that ball bearing slides into. So I know my orientation. I've just got to line that up with the ball. That's fine. Easy done. Nice. I think this is not going to be too hard. This is my o-ring here that the oil is bypassing. Can't believe I dropped that. Look at that. The little ball fell into there. I'll try and get that Can out. Push it There's no way to push, darling. Um, anyway, I'll tap it out after. But that's the o-ring I've got to replace. Okay. We got our little ball out. <laughs> I had no idea that was there, but uh, all that does, that little ball, from what I can see. There's three grooves here, so as you do the selector, you feel it go click, click, click. I know those three little grooves line up with that side. There's a bolt on the side here, which you can undo, and that'll release the pressure on the spring and that ball, and that's how I'll reassemble it. Oh, O-ring pullers seem better days. Okay, that's our O-ring. Now, it, it's hard to say, I need glasses. I feel like I'm getting old, I need glasses. <laughs> You don't have any glasses. I don't wear them yet, but I can't see. <laughs> Maybe we can get you something down. <laughs> we could get you a, a glass, like the little thing that you put in your eye, like that. Just the one. <laughs> so it's hard to say whether that's worn or not, but it would only need to be the slightest wear on that, and it's not going to seal. So that's what we're going to hunt down. And you know what? I think I found a bag of these on the boat. So I'm assuming that I have these spares because I'm pretty sure, and if I don't, I've got so many O-ring kits. I think we're going to be right, eh? That's if this is the problem. That's my assumption. So where does this seal against? That's the next thing. I see. That O-ring sits up against this. So it's got to make a seal in here. You can see where it's been rubbing the O-ring. I think that looks like a bush. Yeah, it is. Just clear that up. That's like a little brass bush. If I was to take that to a machinist, I could potentially make up a new sleeve for that. So you can see that's the material of the actual housing and there's like a 10 mil brass bush and you can see that shiny bit where the o-ring has been rubbing the whole way around so it would only need to be the slightest little bit worn there and we'd have oil leaking. For now I'm going to replace it and see how it goes with a new o-ring and then in the future, if I have to do this again, I'm going to have to remove this bush and get a machinist to make me one up. And I know a good machinist in Lombok, but for now, I think this should, I should be able to just clean this and get a seal. Do know one thing, little heads up. If you ever buy a boat and you just want to clean everything up and clean your lockers out and you see spare parts and keep every single spare part you see, even if you don't know what it's for, 
I knew there was a bag of O-rings here, and I'm I haven't measured it yet, but it looks like the O-ring size. So I'm assuming this could be a problem that he was aware of, because I would say he's had a bush made up and inserted in there. Because I don't know if the original housing had a bush. I, again, I'm just guessing here, but I do know there's a bag of O-rings and there's been a bush made there, so it may have been a problem and an easy fix just to takes half an hour. Now I know how to do it. It's probably like a half hour job and I can put an O-ring in maybe once a year, once every two years, who knows. But I did find the O-ring, so I don't even think I've got to go to town today. That's pretty exciting, guys. We can go to town, we can just go to town and go to the movies. Oh. And lunch. So I'm gonna get my, uh, I don't wanna mix this up, but here's the old one, oh, here's the old one. And here's the ones I've just found. Oh, look at that. It's the right size. This one looks the s slightly worn. That's our bag of O-rings, guys. So I'm assuming because he's got a few of them, this is a common problem when they wear out and he just replaced them, the previous owner. But there is a couple of smaller ones there. I don't know what they're for, but the majority of them are the same size as the one I'm holding in my hand. Oh, boom. Nice. So you can see the two different materials, that's the housing and that's the bush. I've just, there is a slight little groove in there which probably isn't helping the seal with the tolerances but again I can't get this machined at the moment so a nice bush would be great but what I have done is I've just got a little bit of valve grinding paste and I've just gone around really lightly and just given it a light clean up. I don't want to take too much off because I still want it to seal but just enough to hopefully get it to seal and uh, got a nice clean surface there now. So I'm just using again another little bit of valve grinding paste and I'm just doing in here where the o-ring seats you can see that's what it looked like and I've just cleaned it up so that's what it looked like so I've cleaned the surface in the bore and now I'm cleaning the inside here with a little bit of valve grinding paste just to clean the surface up so that the o-ring seats nice seats nicely in there. Seats, sits, one or the other. Put our new O-ring in there. Put our new O-ring. There's not much tolerance there, so if this does leak after you can see I've cleaned up the face and everything and a new O-ring, I will just go a larger O-ring. And all else fails, I just have to get a new piece of machine. Slide the retainer on. Okay, locks in. But that's back together and ready to put on the engine. Just another six, seven, eight volts there to go back together. That's ready to go back on. Connect our shifter lever on, and um, we're not going to know until it, until we try it. Well, is choppers. You guys, job done. The next 50 miles, we'll see how it goes. Probably get the sale the next thousand. We won't know until then, but we'll see.